the Joe Rogan experience. Didn't John Jones block you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think he likes me. <laughs> what did you... Uh... What did you do? <laughs> oh, I guess it's just I've made a few videos just dissecting his case and giving my opinion on what I think he did. And I don't. he just doesn't like it, obviously, because it's just bringing up shit that is in his past that he doesn't want dug up, I guess. This is the stuff about the drug testing. Yeah, because yeah. there was that whole debacle with the, uh, you know, the pulsing and the Turinibal metabolite. And when, yeah. What yeah. Is, what's your take on that? Um, personally, I think that if you go back historically to the beginning, like obviously the guy is pretty loose on what he's willing to do in terms of, you know, substances. Yeah. So with him, um, if you go back to his first positive test results, I believe he tested positive for clomiphene and letrozole way back in like 2016 or something. So if you look at those two drugs, one of them is an aromatase inhibitor that you would use to prevent gyno formation usually. And then Clomid is like a fertility drug you would use to restore testosterone production or in women you use it to aid in fertility. So using those two drugs back then, to me, seemed like something you would be doing to either, you know, prevent the gyno from what you were using at a time when it was less scrutinous, perhaps. And then the Clomid, you know, to recover or something was tainted is what his claim was. But we already have, you know, history of him doing this or getting popped for something Pretty stupid to get popped for way back in, you know, 2015, 2016 era, approximately. After that, he tests positive for Terinibol, and then thereafter, the pulsing. But the thing that's interesting about that is when Davitsky talks about this pulsing M3 metabolite, he refers to, well, it's not him, he's just reiterating the research, and it's ultimately they use this reference point of Clomid pulsing as a kind of a proxy to exemplify look, here's a drug that stores itself in fat tissue and pulses over time. So they use Clomid as an example of a, because they can't just give a, a human a shit ton of Terinibol and like try and figure out if this is going to work or not. Mm. So they give them this fertility drug, or they've looked in the data and found, parsed out this information about Clomid pulsing, and they use that as a reference point for like, look, there's a drug that can pulse over time. But the interesting thing is, John Jones literally popped for Clomid before, but he's never had that pulse. So he has this Terinibol that keeps pulsing, but the Clomid they use as the reference point of a drug that can pulse never pulsed for him. But didn't he say that the Clomid was from tainted food? Yeah, but he still got it in his system. So it's like, right. if you ingested Clomid, why is that not pulsing? If so that... what causes something to pulse? Like, well, explain pulsing to people that don't know what we're talking about. Like the idea would be that metabolites of these hormones, like first of all with Terinibol, after Icarus came out and like shortly around that, the Rod Shankov is the one who came up with the M3 metabolite test and like extended the detection window of Terinibol. And that's actually when I mentioned the Summer Olympics and how many people retroactively got their medals stripped or they got popped for the Summer Olympics for like 12 years in totality. A lot of those positive test results for were for Terinibol after they used Rod Shankov's data to like retroactively test the urine samples and see. They thought at the time it was undetectable because they got it out of their system based on the current detection windows. But then when Rod Shankov came out with his, he came out with his data, and when they went back and tested it using his assay, you could figure out, oh, past that date, they actually detected for that, you know, the longer term metabolites. Mm. So the the idea between behind the pulsing is these metabolites that linger. They can store themselves in like fat tissue essentially, and they can like liberate themselves over time sporadically. Has that been proven or is that theoretical? Yeah, and it was proven in Clomid data, which is interesting mm. because John Jones literally is bought for Clomid. But didn't pulse for that. Yeah. So. But it hasn't been proven before with this stuff? No, with Terenable, never. So what's your take on that? Like, I think personally, um, like the amount of Terenable he had was so small. A lot of times... Like for certain compounds like Terinibol, the only way you're going to get it is like underground. Like you're going to get it. It's not a pharmaceutical product that's designed for like a clinical application. So you're going to get it designed by an underground lab who sells steroids to, you know, random bodybuilders or a chemist in, you know, China or something. And you're kind of just banking on the fact that it's not going to be tainted. They're going to use like clean equipment. It's going to be whatever drug you're hoping to get. And there are a lot of different scenarios that might you know, explain it. And there's different theories like I could have that could hypothetically, either one could be true potentially. But I think one of the options is a drug he thought he was getting that was potentially undetectable was tainted with Terenibol. Mm. 
or he thought he could get around the detection window by taking it, unaware of Rod Chankov's long-term data that came out, or there's like a variety of different things that could be happening, but ultimately for him, he got it in his system, and on paper, when you look at his testosterone levels and his ratios of testosterone to epitestosterone, like when he fought DC, they were so out of whack that it would not be explainable, in my opinion, by anything other than some sort of suppression of your system via the usage of something. So to me... Not not hard training, because hard training does suppress it, right? Yeah, but to the degree where he's literally like a female, probably not. So he... Really? It was that bad? Yeah, so normally the levels would be over 10 times what he had in general. I'd have to pull it up to remember exactly, but he was like in the single digits for urinary testosterone, which otherwise should be like, it was like 60, 60 plus or something. He was like four or something. And it was multiple data points of his testosterone being single digits to a point that would indicate significant suppression in my opinion. What what could be another possible explanation for it, other than significant suppression of the super low test yeah. levels? Um, I don't know, castration. <laughs> uh, really? Is that bad? Uh, yeah, it was pretty fucking bad, dude. It was like the equivalent of you only have your adrenal glands producing testosterone, basically. Like your balls are essentially non-functional. But explain this then. If that's the case, then how would he pre- perform well? Because of his. If, if he's going into a fight with his testosterone that low. Because if you have a drug that's suppressing your system, the drug you're taking presumably is what is driving your performance vectors that you deem useful enough to use in competition. So hypothetically, oh. if I was using Terinabol, like all those athletes in Russia or whatever using Terinabol, you're going to have some suppression of your testosterone levels, which you know on paper could inhibit performance, but you're using the, the drug to drive performance. So even though your endogenous levels are lower, you're relying on this compound you're using that you deem useful enough to dope with, potentially. So here's my question. If they're using a test that's sophisticated enough to detect that he has these very low testosterone levels and he has this pulsing of Terinabol, like where is the room for this compound that's going to significantly increase his performance? Yeah, so let's just say hypothetically Terinabol or any random oral steroid is not the, like presumably this isn't a hundred percent factual, this is just speculating based on the levels and whatnot, but if he has a certain even if he has crushed test, the room if they're not looking for a certain drug that's not on their list and you're using it full board, whatever dose you want, because they can't detect it because they don't even know it exists then that's going to be significantly performance enhancing. Okay, so then we're talking about something like the Balco Clear, that kind of a deal? Potentially. So, it see, the thing is, like, when they catch someone with something like what uh, Victor Conte had g- come clean with that they use for Barry Bonds and mm-hmm. all these different athletes, undetectable, you rub it on your skin, and no one knew what it was. Mm-hmm. We think, oh, well, they caught that guy. They're more sophisticated now. You can't get away with that now. Mm -hmm. You think it's possible there could be some new designer steroids or some new compound that's not on the list of things to be tested for because we don't even know it exists, but yet it is significantly enhancing performance. Uh, Like like the clear. If you don't have an assay developed for it, detecting it is essential you can't prove anything exists in the body if you don't have an assay to detect it so even though you have this elaborate list of steroids that are known about if you have a novel drug and you don't know to to detect it even if you have other markers that look fucked up like it's testosterone levels in the gutter there's no threshold amount where you pop because your test is in the gutter they look for high test they don't look for low so if you're really low randomly they might be like huh that's weird and keep an eye on it maybe Hmm. further test you further for other stuff but it n- doesn't mean you couldn't be using something gung-ho the entire time. So I do think designer drugs exist. I don't necessarily know that they're being leveraged highly in the designer steroid family because you could hypothetically probably be able to determine this compound derived from testosterone was manipulated and, you know, see something iffy and, you know, dig into it and get a perhaps find out pretty clear pretty soon what it is and retroactively you know penalize that guy but i do think there are novel agents being developed from the growth hormone side of things epo side of things 
um, the testosterone. Obviously, there's the carbon isotope ratio proof, cholesterol derived t- testosterone, which you could also potentially argue the guy was using basic like TRT and came off and like crashed the system, you know, at the time of the test or something. Like, there's a million different reasons, but ultimately, seeing that level in his urine, testing for a random compound having in the past tested positive for a fertility drug and an aromatase inhibitor you would only use in the context of, like, drug use, essentially, intentionally, in most cases. It's just, like, highly improbable. I don't think that he's at least tried to do some shit to get around the system. 